Hello friends, welcome to the Take Better Photos channel. In this video, we're going to be learning how to remove unsightly wires and power lines with Affinity Photo and learn about its available object removal tools. Needless to say, a perfect shot can be ruined by the presence of power lines and in many cases, there is no way to avoid having it in the shot. AI solutions have to some degree the ability to do it automatically, but for most cases, they can't remove it completely and not to the extent that, that you don't require any manual input. The good news is you don't need AI or Adobe Photoshop to do this task. Affinity Photo can do it just as well with its powerful tools. So let's get right into the process of removing wires and power lines using this photo as our demo image, which I took in Tokyo. And as you can see, the beautiful scene is indeed made less nice by the presence of the power lines. So let's start off with the first tool, the in-painting tool. The in-painting tool is used to paint over damaged or unwanted areas. Complex algorithms harvest information from the surrounding areas of the image in order to reconstruct the missing data. It is the simplest to use because you do not have to specify any source point. So there are some best practices of the in-painting tool. Zoom in close to the area you wish to in-paint. Set a suitable brush size from the context toolbar. We're going to see later that the brush size can play an important part on whether the in-painting tool works or not. Finally, you can always do multiple passes if the result of the first in-painting does not look authentic or seamless enough. So let's begin in-painting the wires in this image. So let's select the in-painting tool from the right toolbar. And it's represented by the blue and red icon. The usage of the in-painting tool is the simplest among object removal tools. All you need to do is to brush over the object you want to remove. The in-painting tool is unique as it is the only one which does not require manually specifying a source point. That job is taken care of by the in-painting tool itself and that makes it the easiest solution for wire and power line removal. And as you can see, it does a great job. In case though that the in-painting tool fails to remove the object properly, one thing that might help is adjusting the brush size. As you can see here, when a small brush is used to try to remove the wire, the wire would not be removed. However, when the brush size was enlarged, the tool worked properly. If adjusting the brush size doesn't work, you can try the other object removal tools which allow for more user control. And that brings us to the patch tool. The patch tool allows you to repair a more extensive area of an image by selecting pixels and replacing them from another target area. It has a number of notable settings. It allows you to rotate the source image. It also allows you to scale the source image. Some best practices and things to consider when using the patch tool. Patching like healing blends the target pixel with the sample pixels by matching the texture, tone, and transparency of the sample pixels with the target pixels. So one thing to note is there is a blending process that is involved when using the patching tools. And this will be more apparent in a moment. The colors in the source and target areas should vary slowly to help create a seamless boundary that blends into the target's surroundings. In short, what this is trying to say is the source and target should look close enough so that the blending process will look natural. Again, we're going to see an example of this in a moment. So first, let's select the patch tool from the right toolbar. And now let's begin using the patch tool. So one thing unique about the patch tool among object removal tools is the way you specify the target area, which is the area you want to replace. Unlike other tools where you use a brush, with the patch tool, you freehand select the object, which might be a little clunky when using it with a mouse. Also, unlike the in-painting tool where the source image is determined automatically using some complex algorithm. With the patch tool, you have to manually select the source point. One nice thing about the patch tool is as you move the mouse, a preview of the source image is shown in real time. Do note that as I'm hovering over the building, the colors of the source image changes to blue as it is placed into the target area. The reason for this is the patch tool attempts to blend or match the source image to the target image. So there will be some modification of your source image before it is copied into the target image. In this case, since the surrounding pixels of the target area is blue, 
the patch tool thinks it is appropriate to turn the source image blue as well. This is the reason why you can't use widely varying source and target images. It will not blend properly. Fortunately for our case, the source image I will be using is an area of the sky which looks similar to the target area. So there is no problem using the patch tool in this case. To confirm the source point, simply click on the point. As you can see, the patch tool works pretty well for our use case and can remove large amounts of wires pretty quickly. The final tool is the clone tool. The clone tool paints samples from one part of an image onto another. Unlike the patch tool, the clone brush tool does not do any blending. So whatever you set as the source image will be the image that is pasted over the target area. The clone brush tool has a bunch of settings, which include stabilizer, hardness, rotation, scale, and flip. We're going to see the rotation setting in action later on. So let's select the clone tool now. So let's use the clone tool to remove these wires which are crossing over the buildings and may pose more of a problem for the in painting tool. Like the patch tool, you need to specify a source point. But one difference between the patch tool and the clone tool is the order by which you specify the source point. In the clone tool, you specify the source point first by option clicking or alt clicking. A preview of the source image will be shown as you move your mouse. After specifying the source point, the next step is to click on the target point on which to place the source image. So you can see here that there is no blending done. Whatever source point or source image you selected is the actual image that is placed over the target area. If for whatever reason the blending does not look proper with the clone tool, I recommend trying to lower the softness of the brush. For the most part though, the default settings work just fine. One unique thing about the clone tool in Affinity Photo is you can actually rotate the source image by pressing the left or the right arrow keys as I'm doing here. Rotating might make the blending look more natural as in the case here where the slope of one of the elements needs to be angled a little bit steeper to have a better fit. Affinity Photo also supports scaling the source image and you do this by pressing the up or down keys. So now let's look at the comparison. Here is the before and the after. Before and the after. A pretty big improvement, wouldn't you say? So there you have it. Three tools to remove wires and power lines. As you've seen, it's really not that difficult. And I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe, like and share to help keep the videos coming. And till the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.